Hello everyone and welcome to Relationships Lesson 6 on Equity Theory. Now, Equity Theory is an extension of Social Exchange Theory and it suggests that people are content in their relationships if the benefits are roughly equal to the costs. So relationships that lack equity are more likely to be associated with dissatisfaction. Now, even though it's an extension of social exchange theory, unlike social exchange theory, which argues that people try to maximize rewards and minimize costs in relationships, equity theory suggests that partners are concerned about fairness. And fairness is achieved when people feel they get approximately what they deserve from a relationship, and more importantly, they get what they put in as well. Now, equity theory proposes that the winning formula in relationships is like this. One partner's benefits minus their costs should be equal to another partner's benefits minus their costs. So what matters is that both partners' levels of profit are roughly the same. And just be aware as well that this doesn't mean that each individual partner's costs and rewards have to be the same. However, the amount of profit that each partner is left with at the end needs to be roughly the same. Okay, So it doesn't matter that they both have to put in the same and get out the same but what they're left with has to be roughly the same. Okay, And another thing to bear in mind as well is just like with social exchange theory, the concept of costs and rewards uh, are very subjective to each individual partner as well. And I'll come on to an example of that a little bit later on. Okay, and if there is a lack of equity, then one partner is either over-benefiting and, and the other is under-benefiting, and that is a recipe for dissatisfaction and unhappiness for both partners. It doesn't matter whether you are over-benefiting or under-benefiting, you will lead to unhappiness in the long run. According to equity theory, a person who is over-benefiting is going to end up feeling guilt and shame. Um, and those who think they put a lot in but get very little back could feel angry, resentful, humiliation, and the longer those feelings go on for, uh, the longer the lack of equity continues, the more likely a couple is to break up. Now, as I said earlier, it's not about putting in and getting out exactly the same as your partner. According to equity theory, it's not the size or the amount of the rewards and costs that matters. What's important is the ratio of the two to each other. So, for example, if one partner puts a lot into the relationship, but at the same time gets a lot out of the relationship, then that will seem fair enough. As an example, let's imagine a relationship in which one partner has a disability of some kind that prevents them from carrying out domestic chores or other physical activities. A precisely equal distribution of these tasks would probably be a little bit unfair, and it would be seen as unfair by either partner. The equity in such a relationship might come from the compensation that the disabled partner could offer in other areas. Or, alternatively, from the satisfaction that the more active partner gains from their behaviour. So satisfying relationships are marked by negotiations to ensure equity, which comes from making sure that rewards are distributed fairly, not necessarily equally between the partners, but fairly. And this inevitably involves making trade-offs and compromise, etc. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the consequences of inequity is unhappiness and dissatisfaction for both parties. And the longer the perceived inequity continues, the more likely it is that both partners will become dissatisfied and that it will eventually lead to a relationship breakdown. One of the things that makes us most dissatisfied is a change in the level of it of equity as time goes on. So for example, at the start of a relationship, it might feel perfectly normal to contribute more than you receive. 
because everyone wants to put in a little bit more than they get out because they want to make the relationship work. But if the relationship develops in such a way that you continue to put more into the relationship and get less out, then it won't feel as satisfying as it did in the early days. Because in the early days, it felt like you were really pushing to make the relationship work and you were doing it for a reason and it felt good. If it keeps going, then it's just going to lead to dissatisfaction because eventually you're going to think to yourself, well, why the hell am I putting in all of this effort when my partner is not? If inequity occurs and it doesn't lead to a relationship breakdown, there are several ways in which partners can deal with the inequity. They can deal with it on a cognitive level and they can deal with it on a behavioral level as well. So the under-benefiting partner could work hard to make the relationship more equitable as long as they believe it's possible to do so. So as long as they feel like the relationship is still salvageable, they'll put more and more and more effort in to making it more equitable again. The more unfair the relationship feels, the harder they'll work to restore equity. On the other hand, a cognitive way of dealing with inequity is that they will actually start to revise their perceptions of reward and cost. So they're going to trick themselves into feeling that the relationship is more equitable than it actually is, even if nothing actually changes. So what was once seen as definitely a cost earlier in the relationship, such as untidiness, thoughtlessness, even abuse, could now be seen as the norm could start to be accepted as the norm. And if you start to see things as the norm and start to accept things as the norm, then they start to feel less like a cost. And so you're making a cognitive change, um, a perception change in that you're starting to see things that are actually costly as things that are just normal. And those are two ways that people could actually start to deal with inequity if it doesn't lead to a relationship breakdown beforehand. Okay, so we've come to the end of the theory at that point. I'm now just gonna put up some note-taking slides so you can jot down anything that you may have missed before we then move on to the evaluations. Okay, so there's the introduction and there is the slide on equity theory where you can take any notes if you need to. So let's move on to the evaluations. So first off, we have some research support uh, and supporting evidence includes studies of real life relationships that confirm equity theory as a more valid explanation than social exchange theory. So for example, you have Mary Utney et al. in 1984 who carried out a survey of 118 recently married couples measuring equity with two self-report scales. Now, these husband and wives were aged between 16 and 45 years old and had been together for more than two years before marrying. And the researchers found that couples who considered their relationship equitable were more satisfied in those relationships than those who saw themselves as over or under benefiting. So research like that confirms that the central prediction of equity theory is true, which increases the validity of equity theory as an explanation for romantic relationships. Okay, so you've got nice research support there. Always have a research support that includes a study in your evaluation sections because it is a powerful evaluation point. Okay, moving on, we have some contradictory research. So Berg and McQuinn in 1986 conduct conducted a longitudinal study on 38 dating couples. Um, and they didn't find any increase in equity over time, but discovered that a high level of self-disclosure and perceived equity in the beginning of the relationships was a strong predictor that a couple would stay in their relationship, and low equity in the beginning was a reliable predictor of a breakup. In other words, it seems that perceived fairness is either present or not, in relationships from the very beginning, and it doesn't develop over time, which is contradictory to the predictions of equity theory. So these findings oppose the central claim of the theory and, and contradicts the idea that equity increases over time after the initiation of a romantic relationship. 
It also suggests that other factors such as self-disclosure may play a more important role in relationships than equity does. Okay, so a nice limitation there again includes a study, which is always really powerful to have in an evaluation section of an essay or an evaluation question. Okay, moving on then, we have an individual differences point here. So there are people, according to Husman et al. in 1987, there are people who are less sensitive to inequity in relationships and are prepared to give more in the relationship. These are called benevolence. And there are also the opposite type of people as well who are known as entitleds. And they believe that they deserve to over-benefit from, relationship, from relationships and they don't feel guilty when they do over-benefit. Okay, so this shows that equity is not necessarily a global feature of all romantic relationships because actually how much somebody decides to give in a relationship and how little they are prepared to receive back for what they put in um, is very much dependent on somebody's personality and individual differences as we have just seen. Okay, so equity theory is not a necessary... So equity theory is not a global feature of romantic relationships, and it is certainly not a universal law of social interaction. Okay, coming towards the end now, we've got one issues and debates evaluation point here. Um, again, a really nice thing to always have lined up is an issues and debates point. Not only are they nice for any essay, but also obviously when you get to the issues and debates topic, you are more often than not going to be asked to refer to things that you have studied. So if you've got one lined up for some of your theories, then you've always got something to refer back to as well. So equity theory, like other theories within the relationships topic, proposes a universal theory of romantic relationships. And that theory suggests that people are content in their relationships if the benefits equal the costs. However, Mills and Clark in 1982 argue that it's not possible to assess equity in terms of loving relationships, as a lot of the input is emotional and very unquantifiable. So consequently, it's probably better to study romantic relationships using an ideographic approach, which focuses on qualitative experiences of an individual rather than employing a nomothetic approach which looks at generating universal laws for human relationships. Okay, so equity theory or research into equity theory uses nomothetic research, so it aims to generate universal laws that apply to everybody using scientific methods. However, given the unquantifiable nature of what it is that we're trying to assess, that might not work and it might be more useful to look at it from an individual point of view and use qualitative research and an ideographic approach which focuses more on the experience of the individual. Okay, so those are four evaluation points for you. I hope they've all made sense. I'll put some of those up now as peel paragraphs so that you can see what they would look like and then after that it will be the end of the video. There's your supporting research, there's your contradictory research and there is your issues and debates point. Okay I've only given you three but if you need to hear the fourth one then obviously just rewind and listen to it again. Okay, I hope that's all made sense, and thank you very much for listening.